In today's episode of Cobbler Bob, we find massive amounts of rust, body filler, and even expanding house foam inside the eight pillars and roof. Dang, this is getting bad. I sanded the paint and Bondo off of the roof. The entire roof is covered in Bondo and had massive holes in it. Uh, this would be the definition of Swiss cheese. The whole roof skin has to come off, but don't worry. I get new roof skins and A-pillars from AMD, and I adapt, overcome, and she's better than she was before by the time we're done. Okay, so let's go. And this is filler. Yuck. Some more glass on this side. There's a hole. And here is that foamy sh Somebody injected in here, I'm sure, it was so that they could lay glass on top of the foam. My God. Yeah, this is getting worse. Another hole. And look at this, more Duraglass. Uh, these are straight up covered holes with filler. Dang, this is getting bad. And this is getting worse. I took out the seam sealer through here, not horrible. Hole there, okay, but then all that, that is a big hole and it was filled with uh, Duraglass and more of that foam crap that they sprayed in there to spread Duraglass over, unbelievable. Uh, it's about 8 o'clock Tuesday evening. Um, I think I have my battle plan. The X means areas I'm going to remove. So I think I'm going to go there. So I'm going to butt weld there. Um, and then you see this channel here. I'm just going to create a piece myself. Just a, It's got a little bit of an arc from here to here, but it's mostly straight all the way across. Um, and it, it ends right there. Okay. Um, and I think the metal underneath is going to be okay. But when I remove this, I'll double check. So all the way across there. Um, you can see here I have... The A color patch panel now, right? So that gives me this area down here at the bottom. Uh, so I'm basically gonna cut and use however much of that I need under there. And I think I'm gonna cut right there on that line so I keep this part. You know, otherwise you gotta get all the way under the entire seam. You gotta get all the way under this drip reel. Um, and I'm gonna cut up there. So I will need to make just a little, little. I'll just need to make a little piece just for that. Um, then I believe all this is okay. I will replace this section. And then over um, here, kind of a similar thing. I do have the other A pillar, so I'm gonna uh, get kind of the glare. I'm gonna rip, cut out all this and all the way up through here to there. I'm going to keep this piece, see, so I'm going to replace all that, keep that piece, and then replace from here to here. So that should cut out all the bad metal um, and uh, leave only good metal. And uh, it'll be a little bit of welding, but I think that's going to take care of it. To show you the close-up, I've already started to rip a lot of this stuff out, but this is expanding foam like you'd use on a house. So there was already rust here, the people that painted this car filled it with expanding foam, and then used that expanding foam as something to lay the Bondo over. Unbelievable. I never would have thought to have taken this big of a shortcut, but as you can see, I'm getting the pieces cut out. And uh, getting back to good metal. Progress, I got a lot of the bad stuff cut out. I still need to get some more down there, but I've got to good metal, and I know you guys look at this and say, oh, it's still rusty, it's still brown, but no, this is just surface rust. These cars, they did not paint these inner panels. The cars were painted after they were welded, right? So you, know, you get a you know two, three-year-old car, and it would look like that. So we've got good metal. You see, there's no rust on the edge of that. There's no thinning of the metal. I have good metal to weld to. i got to clean up a little more up here. I need to uh, take that surface rust off the lower layer. Uh, that is the end of the A pillar panel, that edge there. And this is the start of the underside metal that runs under there. So progress, I'm gonna keep going.
All right, guys, I want to show you something. This little spot, I saw that spot when I purchased the car. That spot right there told me that I was almost certain there was a windshield leak. That to me looks like rust from the inside out. See, it's bubbling out. Um, and there's just no logical reason. There's no chip in the middle of that to cause that. Um, so watch this. Let's see if we can do this. Screwdriver. Huh. Yep, there we go. And there's your rust hole, right? But like I said, never imagined it would, you know, need all this repair. You know, I just figured it was a little tiny thing and I just have to do the corner somehow. But that's what happens when you find a car, fall in love with it, and, you know, you ignore things. But um, you can see here, see that bubbling? Try and get it in the light. Do you see that? This to me looks like outside in. This to me looks like a poor surface prep. We'll find out. Um, but I, I don't think water would come from here all the way inside out there. I think that's outside in. Jump now. Jump. All right, I've got my window channel pieces made. They're not straight. I mean, I gotta, you know, take those waves out, okay? But they're rough shaped. So, but they're not straight. What I'm saying is it's it's curved, like left to right. Um, you can see it's got a bow in it. So it's actually curved in two dimensions. The middle two pieces are straighter. And I got that end piece down there. This end piece down here, I went a little bit past uh, to get this portion here. I think that's gonna made up nicely with a, a pillar. I am creeping up on the right shape. Here is how the uh, A pillar comes, the panel comes. You can see the full piece at the top, goes around the top. You can see how much of it I trimmed off. Uh, I trimmed off all of this outside area here. You can see that's gone. And as well as the inside lip, this whole inside lip is gone because I just don't need it. And uh, most of the bottom here and a bunch of the inside, I'm just doing it little by little by little. But it's actually fitting pretty nicely if you see that, right? Now, initially I thought I was just gonna be able to patch the uh, windshield channel here and the roof. And you can see I even made a patch panel there. Uh, I made that by taking some tape, laying it over, and then laying the tape flat, cutting a piece out, cutting some relief notches in it, bending up the relief notches. I was gonna weld, weld it all up. And you see how it was starting to actually look pretty decent. Um, the problem with this though, is there's more bad metal than I really knew about, okay? 
At this point, I wasn't aware of it. At this point, I'm still also just thinking I'm going to patch in part of the windshield channel. Again, this is rustier than I really believe. At the top of it, I, top of it, I found some more rust. Uh, the real problem is that the roof is really bad. So here, what I actually did was I hammered out a piece for the top left, uh, actually corner of the roof, before I knew the roof was going to need to be replaced. And the patch doesn't look bad. I used that top of that air tank, uh, you know, thing, the cylinder top to give it some kind of shape, 3D, you know, bow, blah, 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 cut shape. But just hang on a second. Let's get the fender off first, and I'm going to come back to this. Hold that thought. Now with all those bolts, let's see if this fender will come off. Now let's see what we're dealing with. All right. Um, it doesn't look horrible. I mean, other than this rust hole, you know. But I think I get up a couple inches above that. I mean, it doesn't, it shouldn't be too difficult. I think this panel just goes spot welded on this flange, spot welded on this flange. So, I mean, I can cut it here, I can cut it here. It's not much more difficult. And I believe it wraps under, under here. So I'll definitely fix that. This looks solid, and there's the original color of the car. Saddle bronze, I think it's color. That's some of the original paint there. Kind of an orangey, bronzy looking color. Here's the inside of the A-pillar, and if you can see here, the spot welds, uh, basically, just grind them off from the backside. Like, you can, if the metal's clean, you can some, if the metal's clean, you can kind of sometimes tell. Like, you see that indentation, uh, right, you know, like, for example, there, there's a spot weld. You can see an indentation. You can see an indentation. So, once you get them ground down enough, and then you can get, like, once you get them ground down enough, you get a chisel in behind. Uh, you know, then you can you can separate the panels like that. You see how oh, now that's open, right? So just kind of trying to go down the line, separate all those spot welds, and break that top layer of metal loose, uh, basically without disturbing this inside piece, which is going to stay. All right, guys, uh, this is not good. Oh, I just almost want to cry. So I've got the A-pillar taken apart. I've removed the entire, uh, the drip rail, I didn't realize, the drip rail itself, the piece that was here, unbolts, and uh, is just held on with a seam sealer. But I got the actual entire A-pillar. This is the only thing left of the A-pillar here, and a little bit up here. Uh, then I started to sand back here, and I'm seeing couple layers of filler. I was like, oh, that's not good. I see more rust, uh, you know, in the metal. That wasn't showing. This was the rust hole. So then I'm like, you know what? I wonder what was under that, remember that bubbling area? And look at this. Look at all this filler, first of all. This car must have had a vinyl top on it. It's a major rust. 
This car is gonna need a new roof skin, I think. Crap. Oh, you guys want an old classic car, you say? See all this stuff falling out of here? Ugh, I know I'm ripping that, but I already ripped the front of it anyway. Split it right there. Do you see this? That's where the mice were living. Yay. Well, at least I guess I'm gonna get that out too. And it's out. Actually, I gotta give props to whoever installed this thing. They actually installed it without intersecting any of the metal framework of the car, I believe. So, hats off to them. Now, let me show you the roof uh, uncovering the Bondo. You see how, how deep that is. Um, over here, probably 3 sixteenths of an inch. So look at this. Um, this is really interesting right here. I mean, that's looks like the rust got all the way through. That's a rivet. I see a rivet there, a rivet there, a rivet head there. This is a magnet. It is metal, so it looks like they riveted uh, in, I think from the backside or something like that, but they riveted in a piece of metal and just bonded over it. This spot here, do you see the the where it turned kind of the brownish and the rainbow color is burn. Um, that's because that got so hot just from the sander sanding off the Bondo, you know, it's basically just paper thin and burned right through. Wow. I couldn't imagine. I could not imagine just saying, yep, this metal is good to go. We're just going to cover it with Bondo. Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a car so bad that looks so good, I guess. I know this isn't the worst in history, but man, these guys fooled me. My wife said something interesting. She's like, oh, the previous owners took really bad care of the car. I'm like, no, previous owners took really good care of the car. That's why this didn't explode through. I think this car was painted sometime uh, between 15 to 22 years ago because I know it was painted while it was in their possession by some uh, fancy body shop in Alliance, Ohio. So I wanted to share with you guys some of my thoughts here. Um, I have a kind of a unique perspective being out of hot rodding for 19 years and then, you know, roaring back into it here, I guess, you know, because my uh, 86 Cutlass got stolen uh, back in 2004, which is, you know, then have after that having kids starting a business income dropping when I started my business, you know, I got out of hot rodding. Um, but this has really been like, oh my God, one gut punch after other another, you know, and I literally thought I was just changing the dashboard and carpeting and putting in my seats. And that turned into a floor and, uh, you know, turned into windshield repair, which turned into a pillar repair, which turned into a pillars and cowl repair. Um, you know, then that turned into a full a pillar on the passenger side. And uh, then it turned into cowl, you know, outer cowl panel repair. And now this is turning into, uh, you know, a full roof skin. The one thought that I really had, um, this may sound dumb, but one of my friends, because we waited a long time to have kids and then it took us five years to have kids. So for a while, we were really upset that we couldn't have children. My wife especially was devastated for a while when it seemed like, you know, after eight, nine years of trying, we couldn't have kids. By the way, acupuncture, no, no joke, is what, you know, let us have kids. But one of my friends told me a statement about children that always stuck with me. This relates to cars. He said, your greatest joys and your greatest disappointments will come through your children. I was like, that's one of my friends, Scott, said that. And I was like, wow, he was, you know, a guy with five kids. Your greatest joys and your greatest disappointments will come through your kids. How does that relate to hot rodding? Being out of it for 19 years, I haven't had these kind of gut punches, you know? But I haven't had the great joys, you know? I mean, I can tell you, I think, and since owning this car and driving it, I got it June 26th, so, you know, end of June, uh, all of July, all of August, all of September, and then it went off the road, you know, October 3rd. Um, I think there was only two times. I probably drove it three times a week. You know, I would take it out for ice cream with my kids. And, you know, my older daughter, especially, who's 14, going on 15, has really grown to love the experience and the compliments. I think there's only twice, probably out of driving it 20, 30 times, only twice unsolicited where someone didn't compliment it, you know? Um, so I guess what I've really tried to keep in mind is even though this sucks and is disappointing and has it cost me thousands of dollars more than I anticipated, I'm on my way right now to Home Depot to get a truck uh, because... 
you know, don't have a truck, and my wife's car's smaller than this, to drive to Summit Racing, which I'm blessed, by the way. Summit Racing is 20 minutes from my house, um, Summit Racing Talmadge. And so get a truck, drive to Summit to pick up the roof panel because I can't fit it in my car. You know, I fit the half floor pan in my car by taking it out of the box and straddling it, you know, front to back seat. But uh, just remember, these great joys that we have are not for free, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And these are all first world problems with all the insanity that's going around, you know, on in the world right now. We should be very blessed. We should be very blessed as hot rodders that the biggest problem we have is that I have to spend another $500, um, you know, on a roof skin. I, I, I'm really honestly trying to keep a, you know, straight head about this, you know, because I'm not you know, giving back to the world like I should be. I'm being a little bit selfish with a lot of this, and I know that, so. Um, anyway, I hope that perspective helps some of you guys that might be in a pickle and your project just ballooned and you want to quit and give up as well. So uh, let's get back to work, though. So I know I'm not the only hot rodder that doesn't own a truck. This is a, uh, you know, pickup truck. Yeah, it's actually 20 bucks, 19.95 or something like that for 75 minutes from Home Depot. This would be your most affordable way if you need a truck to pick something up, you know? Uh, you gotta put a deposit down on it at 150, they refund you the difference, you put gas in it, so. Anyway, uh, off to Summit Racing to get a roof skin. Um, I'm also gonna pick up a new bit uh, to drill out the spot weld, something high quality, um, and a trim removal tool. So here I am at Summit Racing Equipment. This store is massive. I don't know if you can actually get the full scope. That part of the store is recessed back. Um, it's a huge place. I remember when this, uh, I've been shopping here since um, the probably uh, early 1990s when um, this place was on Gilcrest Road. Um, it goes way further back that way too because the, the, the building cuts in, it's been added onto. But Summit Racing retail store is really cool. Um, they're, I'm not getting paid to say this, their website's pretty dang awesome. Uh, the way you can filter stuff by vehicle, by year, you know, by application. They, they have a pretty good search engine on here. So let's go inside. I'm not sure if I'll be able to film very much inside. Go. And they always have here, they always have a couple of vehicles on display. Yeah, okay, that one's cool, but check this thing out. Oh, I was looking at the sign on this thing before. I mean, just look at that tucked bumper. Look at the way the wheel wells are cut. The brakes. Motor, Hellcat motor. This thing's stunning. stance on this thing. Right, I like that. Awesome. You can pause it on that if you want to read. But anyway, here's the retail store. Lots of stuff on display. So. But I already ordered online so I think I can and paid online so I can head straight over to the order pickup. So while I've got the truck here I've got the roof panel in the car. You can see what we have here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an Oldsmobile 455 block. And that right there is an old 425 steel crank. All right, so here's the progress. The B pillar here, A pillar, B pillar. Um, and I, have, of course, had my respiratory protection on because this right here is lead. I tried not to sand it much because I don't want to put lead in the air, you know, minimize that. But that right there is the seam. Uh, so the factory roof seam is uh, there. There's going to be a channel. I'll melt that lead out. Um, and then if we keep going down, we can still see rust pits. Not horrible, but we see pitting. Then here, that's a low spot. Yep, definitely a low there. I could tell because when I was sanding, there's a big spot of Bondo. So one two spots, three, four, five. That's where the studs were, I believe, uh, for the vinyl top that this car must have had. So as soon as we get below that line, look at that. The corrosion just absolutely disappears. So I may need to go a little bit further down. I don't, I don't want to put full quarters on it, but uh, I don't know if this metal is salvageable or not. And here's what that leaded joint looks like when you remove all the lead. Now, I remember this was originally a vinyl top car, so they may not have taken as much care as they normally would have. Although, the lead joint looked pretty good. 
Um, but now you can see the metal isn't, you know, extremely smooth. I'm gonna see a low spot right there. Yeah, there's definitely a low spot right there. And huh. I don't know if those are spot welds. I mean, I would expect the spot welds to be in here. I guess we'll find out when I go to take it apart. See, and it's hard to see. Those are holes. Um, I think we might be okay over here. Hole there. I'll show you the other side. Other side has uh, holes down the quarter panel too. Right there. So that'll wind up being, I don't know how big of a patch panel, but means a rear window definitely has to come out. Ugh. Now that the rear window is out, so this is the top of the quarter panel. That's pretty much intact. There might be a couple small... There's a small hole there. I think I'll have to do a pound. I mean, I'll really find out when I actually sand this, but I pounded on it pretty hard with a screwdriver. Starting here, everything from here all the way to there, including this flat lip there, should be replaced with the new roof panel. So that big hole, that big hole, that's all Swiss cheese. That all should get replaced uh, because I believe that is part of the roof panel. The trickier part is going to be over here. So pretty much, and it's pretty much, you can see on this side, it's just what the vinyl top was. If I recall, the vinyl tops, the last uh, thing is there, and then I think it just comes whoop, right there. So you can pretty much see where the vinyl top was, that's where rust was. Um, so I'll kind of have to make a patch panel. I don't know how far up, if I can stop right there, I may have to come closer to this lip, but I'll find where the good metal is, and I'll probably wind up uh, kind of replacing this whole area here, I think. Um, you know, it's not gonna be super hard, not gonna be super easy either. I gotta make sure to just retain the contour right here where the windshield lays. Um, I think this is called a package tray. I believe this is welded to the car. It needs to be cleaned out, but I think it's pretty okay. I think it's solid. Thank God. So here she is topless, so to speak, right? There's the roof skin. People online are like, oh, don't replace it unless it's Swiss cheese. Well, I'd say that's the definition right there of Swiss cheese, right? You can, you know, see through it. Um, oh yeah, and there's this patch right here, right? All right, so it's riveted in. Um, it's bad, so that was the only way. So, a little bit of repair to do up here. I mean, I think the structure looks all right. This was obviously cut. Uh, it should go across to there. I can fab something like that up and put some, you know, I can put some uh, do -do -do dents in it or whatever. Um, 
I don't think that should be very difficult to put that back in and make sure it's actually welded on. That looks like it's dented to me, but so I'll get her all straightened out and we'll see how the new roof skin looks. But man, wow, crazy, isn't it? show you guys where I'm at with this and I'm working on this area here. Here's the dashboard. The dashboard comes down and has a lift here, which I have recreated and will weld back in. But what I want you to see is I just got this piece out. So if you notice it's sandwiched between the inner panel and the, the dashboard uh, cowl panel here. Um, So here's the full A pillar, and this is the entire whole A pillar. And I'm not going to replace absolutely all of it, but uh, like 95% of it. So you can see up here, I had to, up here I had to open this piece. Can you see I had to lift it up a little bit? There's one spot weld there. And there's actually, I'm not sure if it was brazing or welded, but they very rarely on these cars. A few places they do use, do use brazing and some welding, uh, um, you know, filling welding versus like the regular spot welding. So there's a fill weld or braze, I don't know which, but cut it out. Because this piece, you see it's rounded at the top, that actually goes in there, okay? So once you have that up in there, you can see this piece fits against the bottom, you know, which becomes a drip rail. And then here, do you see there's a tab there? And there's a tab there and they're rounded on the top? That's what indexes this piece. So this has to go over that, under that. Little, I gotta get everything Hold on, hold on. Let me get this on the tripod. So the way this goes in, this tab goes under there. The A pillar has to go over, over, but I gotta go under the dash. So under the dash. Holy crap, look at that. That's almost in place. So now it's under there like it needs to be. I may need to scoot it over just a little bit. Uh, this is where before I weld everything, I'll have to put the windshield in just to make sure it fits. Um, now down here, some of this is going to need to be trimmed. And then that'll drop down the rest of the way. And I think it will be in. Look at that, huh? Now i got to get the rest of this. This is the remainder of the drip rail. You see to that metal edge, this has to come off all the way on both sides. And you can't see the spot welds. Um, and on the back edge, I need to take out, this is the remainder of the roof. I need to take out that whole edge there. Um, yeah, I'll figure it out. I don't think this is going to be very difficult because you can peel a little bit up and you can tell where the spot welds are. And it's pretty rusty, so I think it's going to come off pretty easily. Now the uh, metal's not prepped. I need to do the, um, um, what do you call it, weld through primer and drill holes where the plug welds are going to be. But that is how it should fit. Look at that. Gap is nice and tight. And it's not perfect on the inside here. It, this, uh, there's some places it gaps a little bit, but what I'll do is I'll weld the places where it's close, hammer uh, the places where it's not close down. And I got a good gap there. And then I'm butt welding it here and butt welding it across there. So I think that's gonna be pretty awesome.
So in case you were trying to figure out what I was doing here. So this is the, the drip rail, you know, a pillar, right? Drip rail, roof. And when I cut, um, you know, I sliced the, the roof. Well, you can see the line there. The blade touched the metal underneath. Um, and that's where I cut the roof off. But there's this, obviously it's all twisted up now, but that piece of metal, uh, the roof skin comes down. Um, you see there's a, a, a fold that goes down and then over. And the roof skin actually ends uh, perpendicular to this vertical rail here. So that's that little half inch piece I was trying to get out, which is not easy because it is spot welded in about every inch and a half or so. Um, you know, you can see the spot welds there I tore, right? You see those little dots where the metal tore. If I can get it to focus on what I want it to focus on. Um, you can see those there. So the trick is to remove that piece of metal without disturbing number one, it would be the placement of that channel because that's going to determine where the roof skin sits. So number one, the, the you know, I don't want to move this. And then the second thing is I don't want to rip it or put bends in it. I'm not as concerned about that. Like for example, I punched a hole through it here. Um, you know, that's not that huge of a deal uh, because the placement of the, 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 the channel is still there. You know, I can just pound that back up and weld that shut. So um, and now I can get the rust out of here as well. Um, we're getting one step closer. So I have to do the other side and then I still got to get this whole back channel off. Back of the quarter panel, there's a hole there. I think what I'm actually gonna do, because I think the metal around that is all solid, is I'm gonna put this piece of copper backing up from, there's a access hole here in the back. I can get it up in there. Kind of like that. And I can just see if I can just weld it shut. All right, I'm gonna show you what I got here. So I bought uh, 10 bucks, 20 gauge steel. 20 gauge steel is like 30,000. I think that's pretty much the same thickness as what's up there. Uh, six inches wide, cut it in half. It's pretty floppy. And this is, and I'm doing this because I am recreating this bracing right here, okay? And you can see it's got a step down in it and some holes in it. You can kind of see the shape under here. So, it's pretty crude, but it works. I'm using a dolly back here. I like that. And I'm uh, just working it, working it, working it.
Now we've got something that's pretty strong. Granted, it's lumpy bumpy. I'm gonna flatten the, you know, some of the areas out if I can. Don't miss the spot. And here is the new brace installed. Uh, spot welded in there. Plug welded, I should say, drilled some holes. Um, I don't know if it just, I think it's supposed to be spot welded there. It wasn't from the factory. There's their seam. I think it's in good shape. Beautiful. Uh, but this part is next, and this is actually the top of the quarter panel. So next what I need to do is I need to create a patch panel um, and I, I have not found anywhere other unless you can find one from a, you know, another scrapped car. I need to probably replace just this portion up to, I don't know, somewhere up and in here, but I need to replace, uh, you know, that ledge there. So what I did here was I just put some little tacks. It's not welded to the car, it's just tacked to keep its shape. Uh, then I think I'm gonna take it to the bench and uh, weld that piece up so it's one solid piece. So here's the piece, MIG welded together. I backed it up with copper, that's why the welds in the back are nice and flat. And I'm just gonna grind the welds down. All right, so here's where I'm at. That piece that I made, uh, this is half of it, was too tall, so no good. I did find this black piece here. This, I think, was a scrap from... Uh, I ruined one of the A-pillars. I bought a new left A-pillar. At first, I was just going to section it, but I think that's left over from this. And it has a right arc and curve. So, like, look at that, right? Let me get it kind of in place. Look at that, huh? I had to do very little fitting to get it to work, but <coughs> right now I'm making two pieces one. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So I got it in place and I just tacked it, but I don't want it to be overlapped like that. So I'm going to join those together. Now here's a patch that is well fit. I've got those two pieces welded together, sanded it, grinded it down. And you can see just barely see under there. It's almost perfect there, but I need to basically take the cutoff tool, cut at an angle, the cut and butt technique I've uh, talked about before, and that'll let this edge drop down in so that this surface is gonna be parallel with this one. Now to pull them off and uh, put the weld through primer between the bare metal surfaces.
so here's the window channel slash top of the quarter panel repaired. I gotta, I gotta still weld some down in there, but it's getting there. Hole there, I gotta, I burned through, I gotta fill. But this top edge looks pretty good to me. I think this, this edge is still straight because I left it. There's a little bit of waviness I can feel right here, but it's low, so there'll just be a little skin coat of filler. And I think it'll be in good shape. So we got this on here. My younger daughter, my 11 year old, actually helped me cut it out and stick it on. And these pieces, uh, you know, come in sheets. And I'll put the part number here in the description. Uh, they come in sheets like this, folded in half in a box. They're folded in half. That's why you see these seams across each one. But so that took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full sheets. So like nine, 10 sheets or something like that. Um, I'm just looking at Summit Racing Equipment, and that is the part number right there. I think it was like 169 bucks, 169 bucks or something like that. It was not cheap, but the Dynamat was even worse. So um, anyway, now it doesn't sound like a, you know, hollow drum anymore. Now, if you're astute, you'll see this is actually not in correct chronological order because I'm taking the roof out of the box. Uh, but uh, the reason I'm stopping the video here in just a couple minutes is I don't want to make it uh, a feature length movie. Um, but I also wanted to bring some closure. Uh, so it's just too much material to get the roof to the welded point. So I think what you're going to see in the next video is you will see the A-pillars on the roof all welded on. But for now, uh, this gets us to at least some closure point where you're going to get to see in a moment that the roof skin and the A-pillars actually do fit very well.